Hi. Uh, <laughs> thank you. That's uh, quite warm. It feels like it's my birthday again. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'll just uh, introduce myself briefly. So, yeah, I'm Annick Marie. I come from Canada. More precisely, Quebec, also known as the French part. And more precisely, from Magdalen Island over there, which is quite remote, which is five hours ferry away from the land. So we have an amazing landscape of red rocks, sandstone. Um, the erosion is pretty fantabulous uh, right now with uh, the sea that is rising. So we think that we will have another maybe 50 years of, um, of touristic seasons. We also have very um, amazing colors for houses. We say that um, it's very good for the sailormen to, uh, to be able to find back their way back home when they uh, come back from the bar. <laughs> so that's for the very... Um, first introduction of where I come from. Now the question may be, uh, why am I here talking about women traveling alone? Because I'm, no, I'm not an expert like some of the people that were here yesterday. I haven't done 170,000 uh, kilometers hitchhiking around the world. I define myself as a neo-nomad and a vagabond. Neo-nomad because I change places all the time and a vagabond because the way I, I travel is with very little resources in general. So it's really complicated when people ask me, where do you live or where do you come from? So you can see here, it really started simply with the Magdalen Island. And then my parents moved out. And then I went to college. And then I did a year abroad. And then I changed university. And then it just started happening. I, did not, I never dreamt that I would be a traveler. That's one thing that I don't have in common with a lot of people here, it just happened. I just said, okay, maybe I would like to do, you know, the classic American tour of three weeks backpacking through Europe doing five capitals. I thought of doing something like that. Well, not, not five, maybe 20. And I travel mainly hitchhiking. So uh, I wanted to calculate at some point uh, how much I travel by hitchhiking. And um, I calculated for last year that I did four trips uh, accompanied I did 50 trips by myself, and so most of my trips, well, in average, they're 362 kilometers, and so last year was roughly 20,000 kilometers. So I do a lot of hitchhiking, and it's mainly alone. Also, well, as a vagabond, I dumpster dive a lot, which means I turn food into trash that was turned into trash too soon. So, and my favorite place is actually the next picture that we're going to see. Oh, no. Oh, that's the old one. Okay, sorry. This one here, it's in Berlin. It's um, a little north from, uh, from Berlin in Pankow. If you have a chance to get to, uh, to this dumpster, it's full of uh, bread. Sometimes it's not very clean. There's a bit of sugar on it. I used to work uh, for Couchsurfing voluntarily, um, more specifically for the safety team of Couchsurfing. Um, that means that I was dealing with uh, complaints that people were giving about, well, lots of issues like spam, scams, misunderstandings, sexual harassment, inappropriate contents in their profile, anything in relation to privacy, police reports, yes, sometimes, and sadly, deceased members as well. So you can imagine that working on that division of Couchsurfing, I've seen a lot of stuff that can happen to travelers, to people traveling alone, to people traveling in groups and families, etc. Um, I'm also a member of a group called Independent Women, and I took a lot of inspire, inspiration for this conference on this, uh, on this group. At some point, we organized a big meeting in 2008, and um, we organized workshops, and that's where I got my passion for workshops. I normally don't do conferences, I do workshops. And I started doing more workshops, like here at the Berlin Beach Camp in 2008, or here at the Vienna Calling in 2009. What this conference is not about, just to clarify quickly, I'm not going to teach anybody how to travel, uh, how to take a train, how to go from one place to another. I'm not going to review checklists of the administrative things, the visas, the money, how do you do that. I'm not going to talk about family traveling. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to talk about traveling with a baby alone as a woman, even though I know people who do it. And I'm not going to talk about a specific type of traveling, such as uh, vagabonding or traveling by train or traveling. Any type of traveler can, I think, benefit from what I'm talking about today. Oh, and the last thing, I'm not talking about funny gadgets that women use for menstrual products or to pee while standing, even though if you want information about this, you can come and see me after the conference. <laughs> All right. 
So I wanted to start after this little introduction that is a bit long, but with some inspiration. And so here we start with some models of, uh, of women that uh, traveled alone for, for a part of their life, all types of women. So to start really briefly, here is uh, Anna Leonowens. You might have heard about her if you've seen uh, the musical, which is Anna and the King, or the book, which is The King and I, or maybe I'm confusing both of them. So she was an educator, a social activist of her time, and she, um, she lectured the wives and uh, children of the King of Siam. Next one, Mary Kingsley was one of these Victorian travelers. Um, she traveled alone in Africa, one of the first, probably the first woman to travel alone in Africa. She stayed in the jungle, and she learned survival skills directly from the tribes. And she um, wrote books about it. Academia said that it was fantastic, but the newspaper and the magazines did not mention it. And it's probably because she had really weird ideas. Like she said, that the people of Africa were not necessarily inferior, but just different. And it wasn't really fitting with uh, the imperial um, UK, well, the, the, the um, British Empire back then. Alexandra David Nell is my own personal main inspiration. She's a French explorer and adventurer. She is um, thought to be the first uh, European woman to have entered Lhasa, Forbidden City. Um, and she wrote also a lot of books about it. And when she was 100 years, she sent a request to have her passport renewed. <laughs> I find that really cool. <laughs> okay. Isabelle Bertard did not live as long because she died in a flash flood um, in Morocco while traveling. Well, a little bit like me, is it traveling or is it living somewhere? It's a bit difficult to define. She comes from Russia, and uh, she always thought that she was more maybe mm, Turkish or Algerian or Moroccan, and she decided at some point to go live in the desert with the tribes and uh, converted to Islam. Ella Maillard was a Swiss explorer and um, sportswoman. She, she was a member of national uh, teams in Switzerland for at least three different sports. Um, she went to explore the old republics um, of the USSR, so all Central Asia, and uh, she ended up um, taking a lot of pictures, writing a lot of books about it. Another explorer that lived really long despite going in, in remote areas. So the last time that she visited Tibet was, uh, was I think, when she was 83. To continue in the same direction, um, Doris Granny D. Haddock was um, an American activist, a politician, political activist who eventually ran uh, for senatorship. But before running, she started walking. And to make her point heard, she started walking cross-country in the United States when she was 88 until she was 90. And so that's also a woman that lived uh, quite long. Um, sadly, this is not the destiny of, uh, of Kinga, who's a famous vagabond also that wrote a book probably many people here uh, know of her. She was traveling by herself for a long time and then five years with her partner and she sadly caught a type of malaria while she was traveling in Ghana in Africa. Kira Salak, um, that's an explorer. On her gap year, she decided to go in Papua New Guinea and cross the country, wrote a book about it. And then eventually there's somebody from a National Geographic Adventure magazine that heard about her and contacted her, so she became freelance adventurer, although they said that if she would be the main person to write articles for them, um, people would be deadly scared. So we can see her... Um, <laughs> the punch is sold. We can see her here. Um, she's uh, canoeing uh, down to Tombuktu on the Niger River and also camping in the desert. She's been compared to being a real-life Lara Croft. Pipa Baka was also an inspiration for me. Um, she is an Italian artist who left Rome in, on the 8th of March, which is the Women's Day in 2008, and she was planning on hitchhiking to Jerusalem on the Project for Peace. Uh, the thing is that her trip was interrupted right after Istanbul. She was traveling with one of her friends, another artist that we can see at the back here. So the picture is taken in Istanbul market. They decided to part in Istanbul. We're supposed to meet up in Beirut um, a bit after. And uh, sadly, she got uh, raped and killed by one of her drivers. He got caught. He phoned with her mobile phone. So, um, Kat. Kat Y. O'Sullivan is very alive, though, 
and very colorful. She's a clothes designer. She lives in New York. Um, when she was 16, she saw on the map there was the word Zanzibar. It sounded cool, so she decided to go there. That's how it started. She's a groupie of uh, the Grateful Dead. She saw 200 concerts of them. She decided in 96 to buy a burnt out bus. She painted it 6,000 colors and started touring with it until it got stolen by a circus and eventually given back. <laughs> so I'm not even giving more information about her because there's too much to say. <laughs> Um, by the way, I will give uh, to anybody that is interested at the end of the conference, I'm giving a handout with a summary of all these uh, inspiring women. So you don't have to, you can enjoy and relax. As, no. Okay, um, I wanted to mention this rally Aisha de Gazelle du Maroc. So this is a rally for women only. So women go to the desert in the south of Morocco. They do 2,500 kilometers on the sand or on the hard rock with a compass and a map. No GPS, no mobile phone, um, not even binoculars. So I think it's worth mentioning. It's cool. <laughs> um, and last but not least, Leila Gandhi is a very uh, young traveler, um, slightly older than me still. Um, <laughs> but uh, she traveled to China and, and Chile, and she lived in France also. Um, she's Moroccan. When she went to China, she started sending a newsletter to her friends and family. And at some point, it got edited into a book, but without any change. So it was already good enough to be edited. It's a prowess for such a, a young writer. So we're really hopeful that she will write some more interesting material. She's a photograph as well. So the question you might ask yourself, so why would I go traveling alone? It's pretty cool to do it with my friends. It's enough to, to do it um, in a group or organize. What, what is it bringing to me? So one of the things that I really believe in